Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Render Man tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at a couple of different lights. We've already covered the rectangle and disk light, which are your area lights for Render Man. Most of the settings are very similar across all of them, so if you haven't already seen that uh, tutorial, make sure you go back and watch that because I won't be covering the, set the settings that are the same between each one of them. So the first light we're going to look at is the distant light. If we take an IPR to begin with, what you'll notice is that you can't see anything. That's because our scene has got a big wall, so what's happening is the light is only hitting the edge of the wall. If I rotate it though, you'll see that our car becomes visible again. I'll cast that shadow just over half of it there, just by rotating the light. Our light won't change regardless of where it is in the scene, because it, Render Man isn't uh, trying to find out where the light is, it's just focused on its direction. So if we wanted to change the direction, we'd need to do this. So if we wanted it to be closer to midday, you'd have it pointing almost straight down or, or thereabouts depending on where you want it in the sky. To begin with, our intensity is pretty straightforward. It's set to 50,000. This is meant to simulate the sun. Um, you can increase it to be brighter, obviously, or decrease it to be dimmer. Um, so at, say, 20,000, it's quite a bit dimmer, and it might be getting towards evening or dusk, or maybe early in the morning. Um, you could also tint it to make it look a little bit more like those times of day, like so. Exposure works as a um, exponential multiplier on your light value. So at 20,000, if we set the exposure to one, it'll essentially be set to 40,000, which brings us back to almost the same default setting. Angle extent is going to essentially change the size of your sun. So if we set that to 10, what will happen is we'll start to get soft shadows because your light rays are further spread out. We can then normalize under the advanced tab just to uh, normalize the value of that regardless of its size. Primary visibility will make your light visible. Uh, I have never been able to find it in the sky though. I'm sure it's there or maybe this is a bug but um, maybe it's just difficult to spot because it's so small. So with those features covered that's essentially the distant light. A sphere light is essentially a mesh light set to a sphere. So if we IPR that you'll see that you get a sphere. Um, if we set primary visibility on, uh, a sphere that's emitting light. So if we increase the, intens the intensity, you'll get light cast in all directions as if it was just a light globe. And the settings are the same as they were in the area light, so I won't cover those. Um, but it is worth uh, bearing in mind that generally I wouldn't use a sphere light where possible because they are shooting light in all directions you're getting a lot more light rays so you're getting a lot more render time so bear that in mind use them sparingly if you really need them but um, otherwise i just use a directional light cylinder light is very similar to your sphere light except not surprisingly it's a cylinder <laughs> and there really isn't that much to say about it um, it can be pretty cool for these sorts of um, setups where you're maybe doing some product lighting or a car like I am here where you can get some pretty interesting reflections by having a few of them in the scene and obviously you can just enable or disable their um, visibility and increase or decrease their intensity. Really useful if you've got long um, metallic surfaces like a car where you want to be able to see some nice um, topology being highlighted by that light you can sort of see there it's following the shape of the car quite nicely and if I increase the length of it you'll see that it illuminates that whole edge of the light of the uh, edge of the bodywork there so Pretty cool for that sort of thing, um, but also it could be done with an area light that is just pointing downwards and that would be a little bit less expensive on render time because it's sending light rays only in a single direction rather than in uh, 360 degrees. The AOV light is kind of a funny one. Um, essentially it's going to create an AOV based on its name. So it can be used similarly, similarly as I did in the LPE tutorial. Um, if you were trying to create separate masks. So if I wanted to set an AOV to the body, 
I could call it the same thing for this light and create a separate AOV for the body of the car and then I'd have a compositable layer or mask there that I could use in, in Nuke or, um, or Fusion or whatever um, but I won't really show it here that's just sort of kind of what it does. The last light I'll cover is a mesh light so for example if we had a complex piece of geometry like this torus here and we wanted to turn it into a light itself and with the uh, torus selected we will create a Pixar mesh light and then what you'll see in the scene is that our torus is now a light and can be used to light your scene. So with um, product photography you might be familiar with uh, ring lights that you'd often see on cameras they're pretty com uh, they're pretty common in um, makeup photography which is why you'll see a ring sort of shape reflection in lots of people's eyes so if I set up a nice small ring like that you'll see I get this nice ring light which I could move up and change the size of and you'll notice in the outline of what's happened is it's parented the light to your polygon so you can still make changes to the polygon shape and then just a light, just your light settings here and they're pretty much the same as what you would find um, elsewhere you've got your color and you've got texture color if you wanted to load a texture map like I did in the area light tutorial and then as you can see you get the um, reflection of that light now in the car's body which can be pretty cool if you're looking for some slightly more interesting effects if you're wondering why the color of the light isn't just uh, and the reflection isn't just white it's because this car has got a uh, tint on it which is making the the light appear to be different colors but as you can see when you look at the side of the car with some different shape geometry you can actually get some very interesting reflected light on your subjects that's it for this tutorial if you found it useful make sure you leave a like so other people can find it and if you haven't already make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out cg and illustration tutorials every week just like this one become a patron and access tutorial assets bonus content a private discord and more by clicking the link below